Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another information session. This one's called Study with IT Masters in Charles Sturt University with Commonwealth Supported Places in 2022. Bit of an exercise for those of you doing any sort of professional communications and digital marketing in, in what not to do in titling a, a presentation. Do as we say, not as we do. Let's get going. Hope you're all well. So my name is Guy Coward, um, short course MC and general single session webinar MC, um, and I work with credit as well. We also have Chantelle who will be doing a, a lot of talking about the details of things, and she's the CEO and long-term education director and is responsible for the great decision, I think, of uh, ensuring we don't have to do any group studies in our masters. We've got Hannah and Kit uh, in administrative and support role. They'll be looking after the chat. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask them. And if there's anything particularly relevant to, I guess, what Chantelle and I are going to be discussing tonight, put it in the Q&A, or if you have any questions about credit, for example, we can answer them in a session at the end. For those that have just filed in, uh, if you would like to set your chat to send to everyone, that'll keep everyone in the loop and we can get anything that you're thinking or any of your personal anecdotes sort of to augment the, the discussion tonight. Thanks for joining us. Just a quick agenda. Uh, we're going to talk about why to study in the first place and, and what studying with IT Masters and Charles Sturt University is all about. I think that's those are the key take homes and, and I think uh, managing issues surrounding those two points is going to be the major thing and then the rest is just detail. Uh, you're on, probably aware that our course is 100% online and we'll, we'll just go through some of the details about that and uh, talk about some of your credit options and uh, I guess uh, try and figure out what is best for you in terms of balancing your, your credit and maximising your savings with Commonwealth supported places for this year, given the, the government's currently trying to fill a skills and knowledge gap. Um, and then we'll have a, a pretty decent Q&A section at the end. So I guess the first thing to say is we think it's a good idea to study whether you're studying with us or not, um, particularly around the areas that we are delivering courses in. Uh, which are broadly IT, project management and digital marketing. Um, and there's a few ways you can think about value. I think, uh, I think, and I hope that the courses are really rewarding just as their own enterprise. Like if you are interested in IT, it's a really exciting time to be in the field. Uh, you know, in every day in the news, you see something that's going on, whether on a, a geopolitical scale, whichever scale you look at, whether it's, you know, geopolitical in an enterprise, individuals always affected by um, either working with you know, ubiquitous technology or affected by the security risks associated with fast paced change and uh, the difficulties of keeping up if you're in an institutional or, or large organizational role. But uh, broadly, we think that the, you know it's good to sort of do it in its own right and it'll give you the confidence that you need to sort of apply for the the next role, whether you're sort of looking at starting or, or transitioning across to a new field or uh, wherever you are in your journey, uh, it's about making sure that you, know, you have the tools that you need uh, and understand which tools you will need into the future. So with this career progression and um, industry relevant study point, I wanna make a, a point that there's probably a few broad types of people that we, we tend to see studying with us. and and the first one is just people who, are, who have done a bachelor's in IT uh, and they sort of just look after themselves and will apply for the postgrad. And I don't think that many of those people will be in, in this webinar. The others are probably more interesting cases and more where we can help. Um, and that's people that are looking at either ch changing their career, haven't worked in IT before and wanna get in, or are looking at maybe changing streams or taking the next step. And it's a very different pathway and I guess, the key message I want you to take out of tonight is that what IT Masters is probably best at in terms of having a, a competitive advantage against you know, other people that can deliver a, a post-grad education course in, in IT and project management is we can sort of understand where you are in that journey and put together a, a study plan with you. So we'll talk about that a lot uh, in the next sort of half hour or so. Uh, and of course, there's the there's the return on investment. There's 
you know, preparation for industry certifications. There's just, it's, it's a useful thing to make sure that you don't get sort of cast aside at the interview stage. You know, they don't even consider you if you don't have a, a qualification. So there's all of those sorts of things uh, to consider as well. And the reality is, you know, now some kind of qualification is a good idea and potentially a bachelor's might be too difficult or too much of a, a sacrifice is probably more accurate um, in terms of, you know, sacrificing potential work and time, given we have a lot of other considerations around family, work, whatever else it is. So I'll introduce Hi. Chantelle now. Um, she's going to talk about why studying with us is a good idea if, if, uh, if studying is a good idea. For <laughs> yes, I will talk a little bit about the, um, the details, which might be the boring parts, but anyway, bear with me. Um, I'm sure Guy will be more than excited to... No, I don't think so, Chantelle, <laughs> because when I ask people whether they want to talk about the area fairy stuff, like I specialise in, <laughs> or the details, they always answer details. So get ready for the most riveting stuff, in fact. I'm very excited for that then. Um, yeah, so part of the reason to study with IT Masters and CSU is that we're purely online and we've been teaching only online for about 20 years now. Um, so we do have a lot of experience in this online education space that a lot of people are in, but we, I think we know how to do really well. So all our classes and exams are taught online and you're not expected to attend campus unless you want to go to graduation when you finish and, you know, put some names to faces, etc. cetera. Um, so all of our subjects have online study materials that have been designed for people who are working professionals who are just trying to, to get a qualification in what spare time they have. Um, you'll get hands-on activities and labs and audio and video lectures. And then we run online webinars each week where you can ask your mental questions and learn with your peers, etc. So we try to have as exciting and interactive ex an experience as possible for our students, but we also do understand that our students have lives and jobs and kids and partners and probably find um i you know study as just not always number one on their priority list and that's fine um, one of the things that we find our students really like is that because our mentors are working professionals it masters do take on a lot of the admin work so that you can always call us up and speak to a person or send an email and get a response pretty quickly but it means that even for the CSU subjects, students often still contact IT Masters because they know if they call us up, they'll speak to somebody who has knowledge about their situation um, and who can help them out in a way that often larger universities can't really provide. So we are one of the largest providers of online postgraduate um, IT education out there, but at the same stage, we have a more personal contact than I think um, it can always be provided from other universities. And I'm gonna get Guy to move forward a little bit, maybe. Guy? As I fumble for my mute button, <laughs> stop looking at the questions that people are sending in, thank you. Alrighty. Uh, so uh, I would say, oh, hang on. I can do these. One moment. So, uh, just study briefly. with us and learn how to use IT better than Guy. Yeah, absolutely. Not an IT specialist. I'm a talking specialist. Uh, I guess so talking about pathways and, and what we're good at, uh, and having, I guess, a, a relatively in depth knowledge of the industry. One of the major focuses of this presentation will be about shortening your study time with credit, whether it's a good idea for you. And, and some of the options later on. You can see here there's, there's four ways to do it and we'll be talking about these at great length, but broadly um, there's these four ways. You can either get your industry certifications or previous study rewarded um, or any ACS certifications or, or indeed our free short courses will, will be helpful as well. Great. So pathways into study. So a lot of you will be here with your own undergrad that you've achieved, but some of you won't have, and that's fine because we are set up for people who haven't studied at a university level before. 
Um, so our masters are made up of 12 subjects, but as you can see from that handy graph on the side there, um, you can start with a four subject graduate certificate. And then after you've finished that, study the remaining eight subjects with a 10% alumni discount to receive two qualifications for the price of one. So that means that you can start studying at a postgraduate level without a bachelor's degree and you get a university qualification in around six months, um, which you can put on your resume and before continuing to study your remaining subjects to get your master's or just choose to study only your graduate certificate if that's all you need. But sometimes it is just nice to have that on your resume to say, say I've studied this particularly if you've got all these industry qualifications and you've been in the industry for a while, it's nice to have that formal recognition that doesn't go away after a few years. Um, and you will find that four of our graduate certificates are even open for the Commonwealth Supported Places this year, and that can save you a lot of money. We will cover those courses and how to get your master's for the lowest possible price on a later slide. And then Guy is going to Get forward again. We're doing really well with the sharing of the screen thing. Oh yeah, it's going great. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I mentioned it before, but um, uh, our courses are structured with this half academic subjects and half industry subjects. Um, so those academic subjects are created and taught by CSU academics. And with those, what we're really aiming to do is to give you an academic grounding in the topics that you're learning. So these subjects can still be technical and hands on, but they do generally have a bit more of an academic bent to them than the industry subjects. And then those industry subjects or IT masters subjects are written and delivered by our IT masters mentors um, who are industry professionals who work of an evening to deliver these subjects. So they're often based on an industry certification like the CISSP or the Certified Ethical Hacker. And the main aim of these subjects is to tie that academic knowledge students have received into a real world practice and to learn how to apply this knowledge. Because our teachers work in the industry and, and then teach in their spare time, one of the things they can tell you how to do is just not only how to do the things that they're teaching you to do, but how they're done in the industry, which we found is really important because uh, often how you would do something based in a textbook isn't how it is done if you are working as, say, a cybersecurity professional. So we try and make sure that our teachers can give you more of that, that practical grounding. And if we move on, we'll talk a little bit, and I'm just going to talk really briefly about the different content areas that our courses are in. So one of them is cybersecurity, um, and that has the graduate certificate that is currently available for Commonwealth supported places, where you can save up to 70% on, on the cost of your grad cert. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but our cybersecurity grad cert and masters, um, we've designed them so that you can focus entirely on cybersecurity with all the core subjects and most of the electives fo focused on cybersecurity allowing you to skip those foundation subjects that you'll find in other courses. Um, it allows students to really hone their skills and focus on the area that they're working in or that they want to move into. But it also just means that if you already have an understanding of a lot of areas, you don't really have to worry about learning, you know, database fundamentals or something in order to get your master's. Um, we do have loads of free short courses available in cybersecurity. I've included a few examples here, but it's a really great way to test out our courses and hear from the industry professionals who might be teaching you. Um, our free pen testing short course had over 9,000 students registered when it ran. And it is a subject that you can sit in the grad cert and the masters. Um, and it's pretty interesting. I did see that we had a question about the cyborg and we do have subjects related to that one. Not every subject is based on the um, cybersecurity body of knowledge, but uh, most of them are. And then there was another one about accredited by the ACS. So the ACS have a cybersecurity accreditation for their masters, and our masters of cybersecurity is included in that one. Yeah, and, and just on that cyborg and, and Siddharth's questions, uh, I guess that's uh, it. Sort of goes back to Chantel's discussion of the the difference between the theory and the application of the theory in an enterprise setting so most of our subjects 
uh, we'll we'll look at one particular theory or body of knowledge. So we have, you know, subjects that are focused on the CISP or the CISM for those that are interested in cybersecurity. Um, and it probably won't make a value judgment as to which is best. It's more about identifying ways in which you might take the best parts of, of both and apply them in your context. It's about much like your your study plans. It's about figuring out what the client wants or what the end user wants or whatever it is and, and making sure that you just are able to execute on that. There's a couple of other really good questions. Um, so we might get through a couple of those. Um, Alex is talking about the free short courses and how some of the links are dead. The forums are a bit old and some of the content a bit aged. Uh, that's a good point, well made. The difference between a paid or CSP course to that experience is essentially that we, we, we have a budget to look after them once they're finished. Uh, it's like they, live, they run on the smell of an oily rag uh, and we, we don't monitor them um, after they're finished. So it, it's a bit of a love job and, and we hope that it's just a good, useful, free library. Um, I hope you're enjoying them, Alex. And if you do three of them, you're eligible for a credit later on. And yeah, a lot of our short courses or most of our short courses are based on a subject. And we'll talk a little bit more about them, but it is a really good test of how it's going to be. But again, if they're, they're free. So we can't really offer the same interactivity, the same responses, the same feedback that we can for a subject. Hopefully in your subject, you won't get dead links and you won't get things that um, <laughs> that don't go anywhere. And if you do and you email us, we fix those right away. Whereas in the short courses, we'll go, oh yeah, maybe we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Uh, I also wanted to sort of have a quick chat about the different, I guess, job roles that might suggest applying for one of our courses over another. So if people want to um, let us know in the chat, if you set it to, to send to everyone, um, which course you're actually interested in most, um, well, it'll be a really useful straightener for us. But for cybersecurity, it's like this is the certainly the most popular course we do. Uh, and also, I think the 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 masters or the the stream which has the broadest possibility, like um, out of the, out of the course, like any skill set is useful in cybersecurity because there's so many parts to cybersecurity. And we discuss that in all of our subjects and short courses. I can see that there's quite a few cybersecurity people uh, interested in the chat and also a couple of clouds. So we might just move to that one now. Um, but but just on, on the cybersecurity, um, who should apply for that one? Anyone that's interested in any aspect of cybersecurity and you can tailor the course to your skill set. and you don't have to be a tech wizard or you don't need to deal with report writing if you don't want to or don't feel that you're ready to. It's about leveraging your current skills and getting your foot in the door and building from there. Great. Um, so cloud computing, and I will try and make this as quick as possible so that we can get through all these slides before, you know, Guy would love to be here till midnight, but I wouldn't. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's worth noting our cloud computing and virtualization graduate certificate also has the Commonwealth supported places available for 2021. And it does feature some exciting topics like virtualization or AWS or containers. Uh, um, and again, has those industry professionals there. That free short course on AWS is a great way to test out our subjects. And we are looking at running a short course on Azure in a few weeks, if that piques your interest. Um, we will email basically anyone who's been interested in IT Masters and hasn't unsubscribed about that one. <laughs> but um, just a little uh, spoiler alert for future short courses. Mm. Another excellent short course is a little bit dated, but it's hugely in depth and it's the VMware vSphere 6 masterclass. Just eight hours of lectures from a, a rambling genius. Um, uh, it was <laughs> wonderful. Um, so I guess the people that would be interested in this, are, like for me, I think it's IT, I, I, like managed services um, is, is really going to be even more important in the future than it already is. Um, and, and this course has a great mix of the I guess the, the different platforms and the different possibilities and the different services that are available and also has some of the, the fundamental stuff like a lot of the, the networking that underpins it, just a question of where the, where the stuff is in the physical world. 
uh, as well as some of the security considerations. So I think it's actually one of the most useful because uh, for, for those that are sort of in a, in a, for a generalist sense, uh, because it, it can be incredibly flexible um, and, and you can sort of apply anywhere from there, I think, and, and be able to sell yourself and create a narrative that really can be tailored to, to your outcome. And just like cybersecurity, cloud is going nowhere. Yeah, yeah, and and it's really interesting listening to to different experts sort of make a, an impassioned defence of their own disciplines, and um, that's half the fun I think in the subjects. All right, so, so networking is um, is slightly similar to the cloud one, uh, but it is a little bit more focused on maybe people entering the network er networking area or people who love being technical because it's just slightly more technical than the cloud computing courses. But the Grad Cert also has Commonwealth supported places available this year. So that's something to um, keep in mind. In this one, you'll get the chance to play the thing, play with things together and play with a network and put, sorry, put the things together. I'm good at speaking sometimes. Um, but that computer network fundamentals short course is not only a really great example of our subjects, but it's also taught by Matt Constable, one of our amazing mentors. Um, and he has a world of experience, but he's also just a really engaging teacher. And it's just um, an example of why we love using these industry professionals, because not only are they intelligent and uh, knowledgeable about their areas, but often they're very passionate and um, really interesting to listen to, as Guy has already said. Yeah, super generous, I think, is the, is the key phrase. These are people that don't need to do this. They just really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. In fact, I'm sure for people that have been doing short courses with us for a while, and, and let us know if you're in here in the chat, um, you know, they would have probably been to four or five with Matt Constable. He does the short courses, he does the paid courses, and he helps us develop the subjects as things change as they are doing so rapidly at the moment. But he is one of those impassioned defenders of, of networking as a as a field of study because, yeah, as, as Chantel was saying, it's it's a great it, it's it, it is the underpinning knowledge that makes all of the other stuff possible. Um, uh, so if you're maybe in a management role and you just want to fill a couple of uh, gaps in knowledge or skill, or you want to be able to better talk with your technical team and and sort of agree outcomes, I guess more collaboratively in the future be a good one to do a grad cert with. If you wanna build from, you know, like a, a, a long-term personal interest or um, or transition into a new career, this would be a great place to start. And it also is a great preparation for a lot of really fundamental industry certifications, which employers love. Things like your Microsoft um, certifications uh, at whichever level or your, your network plus from uh, a more vendor. Uh, neutral um, network plus being the I guess the first port of call for a lot of people interested in in industry certification it's a it's perhaps an undervalued course because it's not you know so hot right now like the cyber or the cloud but I think it's it's absolutely worth considering for a lot of people um, and then we come to this is the last of our grad certs that are included in the Commonwealth supported places. And this is the broadest course we have. So you may notice it doesn't have any industry certification examples here. It's because it includes all of our industry certification subjects. Um, so this grad cert in computing career transition is a great choice for people who don't really know what area they want to go into. This course that only has the grad cert, so it doesn't have the masters that you can move into, um, is sort of a choose your own adventure of a course. You can choose two from all the academic subjects involved in the IT masters courses, and then two from all the industry subjects. So you might choose the grad cert in computing if you're not exactly sure what masters you wanna study and you want the freedom to choose. This is also a good choice for anybody looking to study the three courses we're about to talk about next. So project management, the MBA or digital marketing. Because if you study this with the right subjects and make sure you choose the right subjects, you can study at the discounted Commonwealth supported rate and then move into the masters with four subjects credit that were cheaper than the relevant articulated masters for those courses. So it's just a way to save some money while getting a grad cert in computing for your resume maybe. Um, 
you do have to really make sure you choose the right subjects in case um, that you, because we, we really don't want you to accidentally study a subject that doesn't count for your next master's. So really, it's really important to check if you're unsure, call us or email us or find a way to get through to us because if you're unsure at all, we can double check. We much prefer you study the right subjects than accidentally have to study an extra subject when you get to your master's. Um, our grad student computing also has an intern subject available now. Um, this is a really great way to make contacts in the industry and to get some hands-on experience in a workplace to help you with your career transition goals if that is your goal. Um, it's not for everyone, but it is good for people who just haven't been anywhere near the industry that they're looking to move into. Yeah, super now, important, that yeah. program. Um, I, I love it. If, if you're someone who's maybe fairly senior in your, uh, your organisation, if you want to get involved and actually give back, we're always looking for, for more internships. So, so if you can get in touch with us again, um, you know, and, and, and maybe you can find a little bit of cheap labour and, and also, um, I guess, out of that process, have a really good chance of securing someone for a long-term relationship. It's really useful, I think. Great. So now we're moving into our courses that don't have coral supported places, but we still think they're pretty great. Um, there's the Master of Business Administration in Computing, and it does have a grad cert attached to it. Um, it's our IT specific MBA, and it's been designed to help IT professionals move into management roles. So for a lot of you, you've been working in IT for many years, and it's just that jump into management has been harder or you wish to do it with a bit more knowledge under your belt, and this can help. Um, so this allows you to choose from a wide range of IT master's subjects while gaining the MBA computing title at the end of the course. Um, and if you choose the right subjects that are specifically relevant from our other course content areas, you can graduate with a specialisation, for instance, you could graduate with the MBA in computing cybersecurity. Um, and so that could be really relevant for you if you have a certain area, but you are definitely looking to move into management because MBA as a title has a certain cachet. So many cachet. Uh, yeah, and, and it's, it's a perfect opportunity for you to, I guess, stop the rut. So often we, we speak with people who have an executive team that just have no knowledge about IT and, and that needs to change and it will change but it's a slow process and hopefully you can be the in the vanguard. Um, often we also get people who have already done an MBA and get loads and loads of credit from their first MBA and then just add on a bunch of um, electives around the computing side of things. So it's, it can be great CV padding for want of a better phrase. Um, it's a bit gross, but it is really useful and you can sort of have the two, the two qualifications um, with, significant credit. Um, and then we've got project management. Um, so this has uh, industry qualifications embedded into it like all the others, PRINCE2, PMP, um, you know, the qualifications from PMI, business analysis, that sort of thing. So you'll be prepared for those if you do the right subjects. Um, but it's just, it's more, I, it, it's a course designed for people looking to go into project management or people who work in project management, but mostly IT professionals in that area, because obviously project management is a really broad area and there's a lot of people who work in uh, project management that has nothing to do with IT. Um, our courses offer the ability to study not only a grad cert and a master's, but this is the only one that has a grad dip or a graduate diploma, sorry. Uh, and that means that you could study this and get three qualifications for the price of one. So you study the four subjects of your grad cert, articulate into the grad dip, and then articulate into the masters and get all of those qualifications basically for the price of one. Oh yeah, hot tip. It's hot, it's like for the price of one minus 10%. Everyone who studies a master's or wants to study a master's should start with a grad cert unless they want to put the masters on their CV, because once you finish the grad cert, you get a 10% alumni discount no matter what. So just do that. Yeah, it, obviously. Good. Save the money. <laughs> Uh, oh, and if you are someone who, like me, 
has long thought of agile project management as a dirty phrase or word. Uh, have a look at this short course, agile project management down the free short course on agile data and information management. Super interesting and an impassioned defense of agile methodology by um, good friend, Brenton Birchmore. He changed my mind and that is hard thing to do. So um, get onto it if you hate it or if you love it, you know, tool yourself with the arguments for, you know, your dinner parties. You know. It turns out agile isn't just a term that means you have to stand up in meetings. Yeah, or burn all the paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or just win an argument at your dinner parties, you rich project management fat cats. <laughs> Um, so applied digital marketing, this is our last one that we're going to talk about when it comes to content areas. Um, so we've got the grad cert and the masters in applied digital marketing, and we've tried to make it as hands on as possible. And it features subjects in analytics or social media platforms or search marketing or big data. Um, and a lot of just different areas that we think are really important for digital marketing. It does also include the digital, the internship subject, if you'd like to do that. So it's not a requirement, but it's just something that people moving into the digital marketing space might find relevant. Um, and it, that's a great way to give students hand on, hands on experience and, again, to make contacts because you know that contacts are the, the really key thing there. We do have a few really good short courses on this topic. Um, the digital marketing analytics listed above is great. They're not only giving you a great example of how to use analytics in your marketing, but you'll get to learn a lot from Alicia Booth, who's one of our mentors. She has a lot of amazing experience in the industry. So I think it's definitely worth it checking out if you're interested at all. All righty. Let's talk a bit about some more nitty gritty uh, and how to maximize your credit and how to mitigate some of the time and cost associated with study uh, for, for those interested in it. And this is particularly relevant for people that wanna move on to the masters because as we'll discuss, um, perhaps credit is a bad idea if we have an opportunity to, to award Commonwealth supported places. But that's only been a recent thing. So we've always talked about ways to mitigate the time and cost associated with it because it is a big deal. Uh, so um, there's been a couple of questions and we'll, we'll get to the questions maybe at the end because we are running long and Chantelle and I are excellent at waffling. But Sorry, I thought I was going to be quick when it comes no, talking about the content. Information. <laughs> it's lovely. And, 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 you know, I hope your passion seeps through. Um, basically, we know lots about certifications and we award credit for the ones that are good. And if anyone has any certifications and are thinking about whether or not they'd like to do study, maybe just chuck them in the chat now because I can see the chat as it scrolls through. Uh, and we'll, we'll say, yeah, that's a credit, just like that. Um, it's a pretty simple process. There's lists and credit maps on our website, or you can always just give us a call or do an eligibility assessment. Not only is it an eligibility assessment for whether you can get into the course and hot tip, all tertiary education institutions are desperate for students and will find a way. If you're worried, stop, um, just apply, because you know we'll, we'll, we'll find a way to let you in and we'll support you to make sure that you don't, I guess, crash and burn. Um, the other part of the eligibility is eligibility for recognition of prior um, experience or learning. And you know all of those certifications, so many more, if you have something that isn't on the list, please get in touch because we need to kick up the bum to assess the new ones because the, the new ones just come so fast. I'm thinking offensive cybersecurity certifications. It's, it's just like the list is endless. Um, some of our subjects prepare you for these industry certs. So it's an interesting one if you're considering whether to get it and get credit in the future uh, and like maybe expedite your, your post-grad uh, qualification that way or maybe you're looking at getting it, but you want to do a, a bit of study as well, you could actually prepare for the certs and then smash the exam. It really depends on your objectives, on who's paying. It's an important consideration as well. A lot of you have been talking with your employers and, and different employers have different preferences as to you know, which is best for them and which they want to market their services to their potential clients with. Uh, and, and importantly, it includes retired certifications. So if you've got 
a rather old, I'm thinking Microsoft or Cisco certification, it goes through so many changes because of you know their commercial considerations and the, the rate at which their technology develops. Um, if you can demonstrate to us that your, your knowledge is current, if not your certification, we'll still award the credit. It's a fairly simple hmm, approach. Which is a handy way to get recognition for those certifications you worked really hard for 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, look a little daggy on your resume at the moment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's a really excellent, I think, example of uh, the, the way in which uh, tertiary qualifications have, have maybe been added as a step before certifications in terms of sorting uh, for, for people that are applying for new jobs. It used to be, you know, sufficient to have X certification in whichever field you're interested in, but now you need both. And that's a, a pain in many ways, but hopefully it results in better outcomes and maybe not, who knows? That's that's part of the fun of the study. You can, you can critique the system as it operates now, but it's a really easy process. Hannah's been putting links in all night about, you know, where you can find more information and, and get into it, it's great. It's the best way to start a conversation about tailoring a study plan as well. Uh, free short courses, my favorite. Uh, That's because you like here, you like being given the opportunity to speak. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, chatty boy, mm, a shameless attention seeker. Uh, if you do three of the short courses though, uh, you will earn a credit towards any of the IT masters affiliated postgraduate qualifications. The only question and we might touch base on it in a second, but it is worth remembering if you are going to do your masters after the Commonwealth supported places, mm. keep your credits till later, save yeah. the cheap, like do the cheap courses and then save your credits for when mm. they cost the most. The real question is why they haven't extended the Commonwealth supported places to the masters and, and um, who knows, something, something. You can speak to the government about that. Yeah, anyone that uh, has the ear of thems that matter, um, get into them, please. Anyway, there's so many short courses and they're a great free resource. And the, the, I think the best thing we do because of course it's free and because of course I do it. So therefore very important. Uh, but th this is a, like all of our credits, it can be applied anytime. So you can use the free courses to study before you do a subject, if you're doing one subject at a time, or you can do it to replace a subject so you don't have to commit to that subject. And we've got heaps of sub, like subjects on that particular area. I'm thinking like a Cisco subject for networkers. Uh, yeah, they're, they're bloody great. And you get thousands of people onto them and you can build networks from it. You can get job offers from it. You can get all sorts of confidence from it. It's a really nice way to, I guess, start your journey. And if you are someone who is worried about eligibility into a course, then this is the first step for you. you. You do some short courses, you demonstrate to us that you are someone who is willing and able to commit to even a short period of study and it will give us the ammunition we need to go and say, actually, this person deserves it through you know, uh, their, their demonstration of sheer willpower. And that's enough for us. Um, if you, if you want it hard enough, so to speak, if you can manifest it, will help. Um, yeah, I could speak all night about short courses, but please stop me. Uh, this is the ACS membership stuff we were talking about. They love having a chat too. Uh, and this is a nice way of getting credit because it's a half hour interview or so. You just get in touch with them if you remember. You can become a member and then get these uh, these assessments of your experience and out of that. Hey Guy, just click next slide. Uh, uh, has something gone wrong with me old slide I machine? I think maybe it has. Mm. Thank you. What do we got? I'll stop the share <laughs> and I'll start a new one. Turn it off and on again. How's that? It is very good. Excellent. So this is the uh, the ACS, uh, a visualization of the, the rubbish I was just talking. Uh, it's a great idea. It's useful to be in touch with the peak industry body in Australia, first of all, whether you're embedded or not in the industry already. And they have lovely chats and, and they sort of assess your level and your, your experience. And then using that, 
we can actually award recognition of prior learning just through your experience. And it's really useful. It's a relatively recent development and I'm very grateful for it because it allows people that have been in the field for 20 years and have never had an employer willing to pay for anything to maybe take the next step. They don't need to sort of worry about, um, you know, hitting the glass ceiling quite so much. Really useful. Alrighty then. Um, we'll pass over to me again and just talk about the Collins Porter Places or is this your slide guy? Just realize there's no name there. Oh, in that case, I can uh, keep chatting. Mm, uh, if you want to. No, no, actually, you get into it because you know more <laughs> about these than me. I, I, I don't know. I just want to start shouting about, about <laughs> well, making this, it eligible for a master's as well. This is relevant to a few questions we had about um, how to get that 71% discount that people keep talking about. So and we have four courses available for Commonwealth supported places, and I went through them before, but I'll say them again, cybersecurity, uh, cloud computing and virtualization, networking and systems administration, and computing career transition. Those grad certs are all available for the uh, Commonwealth supported places. Um, and the government has decided, in their infinite wisdom, that it's the IT subjects that are reduced from $34.50 to $1,000 per subject, and that's a 71% discount. And then management marketing subjects are reduced from $34.50 to $18.28 per subject, and that's a 47% discount. So still a steep discount, just not, you know, as big as 71%. So the way to get the full 71% discount is to study IT-based subjects. Um, if you have any questions about those or double checking which ones they are, email admin at itmasters.edu.au or give us a call because we will definitely be there to help if you need it. If you are a using HEX help, so that's Australian citizens, obviously, um, there is a further 10% discount available for those who choose to pay up front. Um, so the total cost of an IT subject only grad cert would reduce from $13,800 to $4,000 or $3,600 if you pay up front. So definitely worthwhile checking out if you're at all interested in any of those courses. Even if you don't really care about the discount, it's still worthwhile doing the grad cert and then moving into the master's with that discount because it's a pretty good discount. And um, as I said earlier, make sure if you are going to move into the master's, keep your credits for the master's, save the money on those as well. Um, just whatever the way to get the cheapest master's possible, that's what we want to find you and mm. find out for you. Yeah, the, the, only, the only consideration would be time. So there's the, like, and this is, this is going back to, to what's best for you and according to your objectives and your other interests and, you know, obligations. You know, if you're already in a decent paying job and you just want to follow a passion into IT out of, I don't know, like hospitality or something, then it, it might be difficult to, to justify taking a lot of time to study. Uh, so therefore it might be a good idea to, to do two CSP subjects and get credits for the rest out of free short courses uh, and maybe doing a certification at the same t concurrently with your uh, your studies and you can just sort of whack it out in three months and you can really get into your new career get a foot in the door and then build skills from there you know really it is about making sure you get in touch with us and saying here's where I am here's where I want to be uh, and we fill in the dots with you to sort of what's the sure quickest it. cheapest way I can do it well or quickest or cheapest um, quickest and cheapest it really depends what what it is you need and why you need it um I, I guess like the thing for us is you know we don't want to give you loads of credit if it's not the best thing for you and we don't want to make you study things you don't need to know or you already know um so so that's where i think really we come in um and hopefully you know that has been made clear tonight and i think the next slide will also say some of this again Oh, good. <laughs> I kept the powder dry. I don't know what that means, but sure. <laughs> well, I, I like repeating myself. Uh, 
yeah so so if if you do take advantage of the csp with a grad cert you can then get your credits later on you can get up to 50 percent credit in any course but if you do the cheap four you can um even if you change stream, take those four subjects across as credit, usually depending on, you know, details uh, and, and, you know, uh, I guess make it as efficient as possible according to what you, you value and what your metrics are. Um, so just make sure that you, you let us know what you're doing or what you would like to do when you get involved or when you, when you start planning it and we can sort of, we can even help you sort of talk through when is the best time to start according to the subjects that you're most interested in because of course you know it's a lot of legwork to go and sort of say well which subject is running at which time we have all of this information fairly you know front of mind and, and can sort of say all right well let's let's park this for three six nine months whatever it is and say well here's the perfect time to start for you here's three short courses that would be perfect for you to get you know a roll on get your confidence build some skills whatever it is um, and just make sure that we're setting you up for success, not just cramming students in, not just setting people up to fail and, and getting some sweet CSP money off the government or whatever. Um, and that point there about grad cert and computing with say a grad cert and cloud plus four subjects, the important thing to take away with that one is that one of those grad certs, so computing is, doesn't include in this one, it has to be an articulated course. So that articulated course means basically they have a similar name. They are included in the CSU system as being part of each other. So, for instance, you did a grad cert in cloud. You really liked it. You want to do a grad cert and uh, you want to do the master's in cloud. You can do another CSP. The subjects from your grad cert in cloud will come across as transferred credits. It's fine. They come across with their grades but then you would get the credits from that grad cert and computing, et cetera. Um, and it would still fit under the rules of you only get 50% of your course in credit. So if you're planning to do that sort of thing, I would recommend talking <laughs> to us first to make sure that everything is fine. <laughs> I, as I said earlier, I don't want anyone doing subjects that they don't have to do because they misunderstood something. I prefer you double check something even if you're 99% sure. Yeah. We're all for a cheeky solution to a problem that doesn't exist. It's, it's, a, it's great fun to try and get away with it. And a lot of um, consternation for the admin team when we promise all <laughs> sorts of things and say, yeah, we can probably do that. Let's bloody figure it out. And then uh, they uh, say, why did you say that? But uh, good on them. Good on you. And then last but not least, uh, for those who aren't studying with the Commonwealth supported places or still just want to know about the other fee funding options, we do have Fee Help, which is an interest free government loan, um, where you have the ability to defer your subject costs and then pay it back at tax time or pay it back in your wages pre tax, much like Fee Help, like all of those options you heard if you're in high school in Australia. Um, and it is a really great option. Uh, the other options is obviously just to pay your subject fees up front. So you will pay for your subjects as you sit them. You have a three or four week, depending on what session you're sitting in, leeway period where you can try out the subject. And then after three weeks, if you withdraw, you don't pay anything because you've withdrawn before census date so that's an important one and that mm. doesn't matter if you're using fee help or hex help or anything like that yeah also um, also useful for people who are interested in multiple subjects in a session but don't uh -huh. know which one to do you know look at look at a couple and, and sort of decide which one's for you this 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 study session yeah absolutely um and we do have students who do that who go i'm just not sure what the subject's going to look like or what the assessments are going to be like um and somebody did ask a question earlier uh, which I was going to get to soon, but I say it now, the assessments can, for all the courses at some stage, you will have to do something that's a bit less hands-on, a bit more, a, you know, university assessment based, but you can try the subjects out, find out when the assessments are due, double check it's not, you know, when you're getting married or when you've got a big thing for your work or whatever, um, and then as soon as you withdraw, you don't have to pay fees as long as it's before census date. 
Mm. Um, or, if then, you, or if you love the subject, just let people know that you're getting married or, you know, <laughs> doing a thing and, and need an extension. some kind of, you know, personalised plan. Yeah, that's definitely an option. And we do, as I said earlier, we know our students don't always have university study as their number one priority and that's fine. It's a bit silly to expect somebody with kids and a job and a, a partner and a life to put university first. Um, so there are lots of fees and funding options. Um, fee help, if you're on CSP, you get HEX help, basically the same as fee help, but you know, applying to Commonwealth supported places. Um, you can pay your subject fees up front. It is worth asking your workplace if they have any sort of training uh, fund available, because often they do. Um, and then it is important to remember credit can be applied at any point during your studies. So if you haven't finished your industry certification, if you haven't got the uh, ACS, uh, whatever it's called again, um, or organised by the time you start, you can apply that. Even if you've done all the other subjects, you can apply it at the last minute and then you're ready to graduate. And so that's about it from me, I think. All right, yeah. What have we got next? Oh, heavens. Oh, we're finished. What happens next? Well, we've got a million questions to answer. Well, there's or that too. 24. Yeah. And now, now's a really good time to chuck your questions in because uh, we'll probably try and cap this at a little bit more than an hour. So get your questions in. Uh, and, and maybe uh, if you have any questions about credit, chuck them in now, like sort of say, my name's Mary and I have these certifications. Uh, I can try and give you a very quick assessment or an example of how the assessment would run. Or you can just fill out the form that Nana just chucked in the chat. You're uh, probably best off filling out the form because oh, totally. um, then you'll get a personalised response from our eligibility officer. In writing, no less. But um, here are the, yeah, these are some of the things that you can do. Uh, certainly check out the, the CSP FAQ. Um, if, you're, if you've been considering study for a long time, and that's a lot of you, because we, we speak with people for years before they, they make their final decision. Um, now's a good time. You know, that, that, that gap in labour and skills is pretty serious and has been deepened by, I guess, migration issues. It's a great time to study. Uh, or if you're, if you're wondering whether you can get into a course or whether you can get some credit for a course, do that assessment form. Um, it's a great way to start the conversation. It's a great way to get the confidence that you need to sort of say, actually, this makes heaps of sense. Uh, you know, we'll always be there for you. Um, and if you're, you're just keen on, on building some skills on the cheap, you can always do our short courses. Uh, other than that, we can probably get to the questions, Shani, and I might just sort of open them up now and, and sort of go from the top. Or maybe I'll start from the bottom because maybe there'll be some fresh ones. I, I do believe Hannah might be cutting them off soon, though, um, just so that we're not here all night. But admin at itmasters.edu.au will be able to help with all your questions. Beauty. Let, let's cut them off in two minutes and we'll get to some questions in the meantime. Siddharth is asking what programming languages are taught in the cybersecurity course. The short answer is none, because there are better places to learn programming. It's, it is a skill and doesn't so much require. I guess the the, the in-depth postgraduate analysis, I think, uh, to to sort of warrant a subject. They're really useful. Go and find it at Coursera or some other free provider. Uh, build the skills, and then you know there are other forums to discuss which language to use in which place and when, why certain languages predominate. That that might be a subject, but in terms of you know just basic skills or or fundamental skills maybe not the right avenue to, to teach those things. Yeah, I can't promise there's no programming in some of the CSU subjects, etc. But um, it's just not really particularly part of our subjects. Yeah, so, so I, guess, I guess, you know, Siad Smelbeg says excellent answer and, and thank you. Uh, but, but for us, it's about making sure that we, we give you the tools that you need and don't give you stuff 
to worry about that you don't need to. It's about making sure that you're useful when you get your job out of that courses. And that's our, that's our aim. Napoleon has a, a question. Is Hexel applicable for graduate cert course? If it's a CSP place, yes. If it's not a CSP place, uh, it would be fee help. help. So we'll get rid of those ones. Reza is asking about the CISP exam. What subjects are proposed in prep for the CISP exam under the grad certificate cyber? We have I'm a pretty few. sure that's uh, ITE 514 is the one I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, that's professional system security. That's the hardest one. We, we sort of have a um, like a, a list. So it's ITI 581, cybersecurity fundamentals. We sort of start people with that one, particularly those that uh, are new. And you can also, it's an easy one to get credit for if you've got a lot of knowledge. Then you've got ITC 595, which is a CSU one. And that talks about information security. And then professional system security is ITE 514, which is you know the one that Chantelle knows a lot about because she has to. Uh, and that's where you get the really in-depth, uh, broad cybersecurity risk management knowledge um, associated with the CISP. And we'll cut questions off now. Because um, anonymous attendee, yes, Cisco certs will be considered. Uh, one of the questions up the top that I thought was really relevant for people to know, am I able to use industry certifications multiple times to gain multiple masters? <laughs> Guy, you... <laughs> no, cheeky bugger. <laughs> I like the idea, but no. No, once, once you use it once, that, that's it. Although, um, Sometimes this is, this is the thing, like there's a lot of gray areas and there's, we're only as good as our, our credit policy is clear. <laughs> and if you can get away with things and get it in writing, we will honor it. But sometimes it is about, you know, the spirit of the, of the code. And, but we, we've seen it go both ways because we often have to negotiate with CSU according to you know, your objectives and, and what we think we can get away with and we have to balance our relationships. Uh, if there's any issues, that it's probably more likely that we'll just find another way to get you the credit that you're looking for. The short answer of that is no. <laughs> Sorry, I should have just said that. <laughs> um, we, we, we're stuck by government regulations. Um, you often but, but, but often But often people can. If you have like a certification that is good for multiple credits yeah anyway like there are so many ways and it's it's a gray area and it's it's more of an art than a science um but there's probably a simpler way to deal with it is the is like and also Chantel is the arbiter actually just listen to her i don't choose that um <laughs> what's your next question guy that you've seen for me uh is full credit available for grad certs in cybersecurity attained from other universities this is a tough one uh, the answer is we need 80% overlap with um, your subjects that you've done at other institutions for us to be able to award credit. Usually we prefer one-to-one -one subject, but sometimes we can assess multiple subjects for one, one subject credit. It's a tough one. It, it's a more lengthy process. And there is still the rule um, keep it in mind, 50% of your course mm -hmm. at, like has to be studied um, rather than credit. And yeah. I, it doesn't really count if you're saying, well, I studied at another university. We really need you to study 50% with CSU. Yeah. Again, there's probably, like, the answer is there's probably easier ways, right? Like, we could go through your existing subjects with a fine tooth comb, or you could just do three of the short courses that you'd probably be doing anyway and get a credit. Like, that's... That's the key. Path of least resistance is nice sometimes. <laughs> Somebody oh. did ask uh, if certain courses include only practical learning activities and exam, or do they include big university report writing type exam? The reason I didn't list the, um, the courses themselves, every course you do will include some university assessments. It's just part and parcel. There's no getting away from it. Um, it's just to make sure that you can analyze and think on a, a master's level or a grad cert level. There's just, 
no getting away from it it's fine um you can do it it's important to remember that it's not as hard as you think but hmm. it is still uh something you will have to do yeah and and the pressure that you feel will be pressure you put on yourself we hope to support you as much as possible it's often hard like you probably want perfect and you know you have other things on but jared asks a related question is there support for people who haven't done academic writing before and there's and so much, so is, much yes. support and honestly like it's often hidden in the links in the web pages but but if you can contact academic skills early like you will not regret it but it's just fantastic there's also a study available. link there are there are different options so um csu have options that will review your assessment on an academic level but not a content level so they'll be like listen if you don't understand cybersecurity, this essay you've written makes sense but you will have to do the research on cybersecurity or ask an expert on that one which means that you get the help when it comes to academic writing and um, the parts of university that some people find terrifying. Um, Guy loves it, but not everyone does. Uh, so yeah, CSU have a lot of resources and we do tend to try and make sure that those resources are shared with our students. Mm. Yeah, and, and if there's anyone with accessibility issues, we'll, like, we will bend over backwards to make sure it works for you. Uh, Darren wonders whether well, Darren's completed a cert four in cyber in TAFE, which is great because it's a, a government sponsored one. There's a government grant for that. Is the government grant for the grad cert in cyber the same one? And the answer is no. Uh, it is more like they subsidize this one, whereas they paid for the grad for the cert four. Um, <laughs> it's interesting, like. If you really wanted to fill the skills, like pay for it, make it easy for people. But, you know, whatever, 71% uh, discount, nothing to be sniffed at, particularly if you've got credits as well. How was the cert for actually, Darren, as well? If you can, if you're still around, chuck it in the chat. Was it worthwhile? What was your story? Like, uh, were you new to IT? Because at, at cert four level, often people who have long had a personal interest will find it fairly simple. And David talks about the, the CSP up to 71% is what we, we said. What are the requirements to get the 71%? As Chantel said, that's about uh, choosing this, like the, the computing subjects because that's what the government is looking at filling the, the skills gaps with. Yep. I saw one question that was, uh, can you confirm that the CSP funded grad certs are run on a due date semester basis, i.e. will you have due dates, et cetera? I'm trying to compare to the free courses, which are obviously not time dependent. You will definitely have due dates. For all of our courses, they're run by coursework rather than um, the research-based ones. And they have very definite due dates, which we do try and be flexible about, but the university only allows a certain level of flexibility. Um, so you will find all the subjects have due dates, et cetera. Siddharth so asked a question about subject availability and a timetable online. I'm pretty sure we have that. We, we certainly have a list of subjects on each of the course pages that are part of the syllabus. Like you'll choose the ones that aren't part of the core that you need to do and you can run it through that. Honestly, the, the, the simplest option is to just give us a call, um, you know, and, and say, here's when I'm busy, here's when I'm not busy. But yeah, the, the sessions that they do run are available on our website. And uh, Mark had asked about IT Masters, are they an ATO for industry search, EG, Prince2, ITIL, etc. We just prepare you for those. Um, if you want to sit them, it is up to you to actually sit them. We used to include them as part of the course, but it turns out we having no control over what was in an exam wasn't really sitting well with the university. <laughs> yes. Yeah, plus it changes so fast. It's probably too fast for universities to, to keep pace with. Like it takes us a couple of years to develop a subject. Um, they can change things for commercial reasons on the you know, 
happened to flip the coin. And we do change our subjects when necessary, but we just don't, um, we can't fit within their time frames, I don't think. There's a good question from an anonymous attendee. Are you able to offer a stepping stone grad dip after the grad cert like UTS are doing now? The only one we do that for is project management. There's a couple which I think we are technically allowed to award a grad dip for. Um, the only question I would have is, is sort of why, um, if it's to exit at a certain point so that you can save money, sure, but you can probably do that with a grad cert. If it's just to pad out the CV, we say chuck the masters on the CV as soon as you start. Even if you start with a grad cert, if you're truly, you know, intending on doing a master's, chuck it on. You know, currently completing is is an is a completely acceptable um, proposition for any potential employer, and and we're quite happy to to sort of say, all right, yes, this this person is a student of ours. Like, these are their current results. Whatever whatever a potential employer needs. The only question I have is why why do you need the stepping stone? And if you have if you have a need. Is there another way to fill it out, like to, to fulfill that? Um, so it, it's a question of you know what your objectives are and how we can best meet them. Russell uh, sent in a question about looking for info on credit for work experience. Um, the simple answer is the only way we can award credit for experience is through ACS. But if you want to give specific information, Russell feel free to chuck it in the question, your Q and A, if you have an ACS, uh, I guess, assessment already, then um, if you're at the technologist, then it would be one credit. And if you're professional, it's two credits for most of our courses. And it's a bargain, Darren, as Hannah might say. Um, somebody has asked, are there mid-year intakes for networking and administration that are CSP? At this stage, as far as we know, there are. We can't promise that there'll be places and we can't promise that they won't be cut off by, you know, the powers that be. Um, mm -hmm. My recommendation is to jump on it when you can, but that's just my recommendation. Yeah, and of course, it depends on your other objectives. But yeah, um, so don't don't wait. It, they're like I've been talking with potential students for maybe what five years now, and this is the cheapest and easiest it's ever been. Um, somebody's asked, are all the assessments, exams, and quizzes all done online? They are. They're absolutely all done online. Mm -hmm. Uh, we used to have face-to-face -face exams and online exams, and you could choose. But right now, after COVID. We currently, it's all online. Uh, Stephen asked, grad cert cyber plus grad cert cloud plus four subjects equals masters of cyber. Potentially, if you do the grad cert cloud first, the important thing to remember is we're looking at dragging credits across from one discipline to the next, doing and, and then starting another grad cert, which would then be part of an articulated set into the masters. So if you've already got one, advantage you, uh, or if you're planning on doing it that way, start soon so that it is likely that this, the CSP places, Commonwealth supported places are still around and then you can maximize your credit later. Uh, yeah, um, and double check with admin if you have any questions about those ones, because I think that is the key thing. I'd, I'd love for everyone to just do as many um, cheaper subjects as possible. But I, as I said many times, I don't want anyone doing unnecessary subjects. Mm. Hey, Napoleon asks, when is the next intake for CSP courses? We, we should totally have discussed that. The next application date cutoff is pretty soon a week and a half oh it's a week maybe? yeah yeah end of the um, week yeah so uh you know don't wait run don't walk all that stuff <laughs> i feel like this should have been part of it i'm sure it was part of the email but we probably Definitely. should have said it a few times we didn't apply now classes, classes start, start on, on 28th of february thank you hannah i knew that i wasn't sure about the last day they could apply 
or even if you miss the first week, like, as I said, tertiary education institutions yeah. are desperate. Um, no, no, no. You need to apply it before the first week. I'm pretty <laughs> sure about that one. Yeah, sure. Uh, Ignore Jared, guy. <laughs> Jared just said uh, in the chat to only the panellists currently doing the application. Well done, Jared. No doubt you got the link from Hannah. Um, yeah, fantastic. That's really exciting. Uh, give us a call. And uh, actually, we'll give you a call soon once you make the application and, and discuss what your objectives are and fit your study plan to them. Isn't that bloody exciting? So good. Uh, Stephen has another question. Is completing the particular unit enough to sit the mapped industry cert exam without additional prep? Great question. For example, cyber fundamental subject and the CompTIA Security Plus certification. That uh, is, it's really dependent on the certification. A lot of them, yes, but for some of them, they're just too involved to teach every single thing you need to know, mm. but your mentor will cover it while you study and say, listen, you need to study that a bit more if you want to do the exam, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they will let you know, but it will give you, at the very least, uh, a very good grounding in what you need to know. And a really useful network of people. Not only will a mentor say, all right, here's my experience, because they will have that certification if they're teaching it. Uh, they'll be able to say, all right, here are the things you need to study. But you'll also have, you know, anywhere up to sort of 20 or 30 people in the class with you who are also thinking about doing the same certification. So you get like a study group, you get people discussing contemporary issues together. It's really great. Like, I cannot stress enough like how useful the the camaraderie, even in an online setting, is. Um, but that being said, we won't make you do group assignments. <laughs> um, uh, somebody had asked about their, uh, they've sent their application in but haven't heard anything. If you're worried at all, just send us an email um, and we will double check on where your application is. Um, our admissions team are working furiously, but if you haven't heard, it's best to follow up rather than miss out. Yep. Danny Zephyr asks whether they're like they're not sure whether they're eligible for credit now, but if they get the certification during the year, can they claim credit during the year? Absolutely. You can get the credit before, during, or after. The only difference is the process. If you get it awarded before, it's slightly easier, but if you get it awarded after, it means you know exactly what subjects you're targeting to often complete your course. Not a problem. Yeah, technically it's not after, you before, during, or at the very end. But yeah, once you've got your master's yeah. credit, yeah. doesn't really count. Yeah, if you study three subjects and then get something that awards you credit that fits under your existing course structure, you're fine, Danny, don't worry. Again, give us a call. Uh, Dinesh is from India and is wondering whether we can help uh, then know how this graduate course helps in the ACS assessment. Probably doesn't. It's more about your professional experience. No doubt any formal education helps, but it's about your industry practice, your context, your, so to speak, stories about what you do. And then they make a subjective judgment as to your level uh, and once you remember. And then from that, we can award credit according to the level that they assess you as competent at. I hope that helps. Stephen was asking which subjects are IT masters and which subjects are CSU that make up the postgrad quals. I will go into more detail on that in the orientation webinar, but um, <laughs> anything starting with ITE, ITI or MGI is IT masters subjects. All the rest are CSU. Yeah. And another way to think, like to, to talk about it is academic versus industry. They're often spoken about on the website. Um, but the, and, and I guess a rule of thumb is if it seems theoretical, it is likely IT masters. Oh, sorry, this is a Charles Sturt University. So for example, it might talk about general cloud computing and that would be a CSU theoretical subject. Uh, but if it's talking about the um, AWS uh, CSA certification, that is a certification or, or the application of a particular 
theory to the enterprise setting, then it'll be an IT masters. Hands-on, likely IT masters. There's a couple of exceptions, but that's a, just a general rule of thumb. We're probably definitely reaching the stage where uh, Hannah is begging us to wrap no up. Doubt. No doubt. We've got four questions left and, and many participants left. Saad has a question. Um, and thank you so much for hanging on everyone. And I hope we've been at least some use. Uh, Saad is studying a Bachelor of Business Information Systems Management and Supply Chain and Logistics Management. Sounds cool. Um, heaps of questions. Um, can I enroll to the Master of Cybersecurity? Probably, actually. Uh, if your information systems management experience or the subjects uh, are relevant enough, I would say yes. If you can demonstrate, if there's any issues about the subjects that you're, you're studied independently or you have a long had a deep personal interest, we would ask you to demonstrate that interest and we would advocate on your behalf. We would make sure that we present you in the best possible light to the people making the decisions as to whether or not you, el you are el eligible to ensure, you know, it is a, if you're, a successful application. If, if you're if not you, eligible for the grad, the masters, you will be eligible for the grad cert. Yeah, and and it's also if it's in your best interests, right? Like, you know, there's no point chucking you in the deep end only to watch you drown. Uh, we would say, all right, well, if you do not have the requisite skills, here is a very easy way to build it quickly. Um, here is what you can do on top of, you know, your personal interest to help demonstrate, you know, and so on and so forth to make sure that we're setting you up for success, not just to sort of, you know, get you in the door and then watch as you fail. It's not right. helpful for anyone. Uh, somebody's asking, uh, do you have a summary list of A and B subjects that qualify for RPL exemption mapping to industry cert? We have a very complicated list. It, it really doesn't apply to most students. The easiest way to find out your credits is to contact us. Um, it, I really haven't seen a situation where somebody has too many credits and we can't, you know, um, <laughs> we, we can't find all the credits they're eligible for. Um, somebody has asked, is there an easy way to see which relevant subjects are CSP supported? Hannah, is that available on the site you've linked to? It would be. Uh, all, you, all you need to do is, is look at the course lists. Um, go, to the, go to the graduate certificate, and if the subject is on there, it's supported. So if you go to the Grad Cert Cybersecurity, Grad Cert Networking, Grad Cert cloud and virtualization yep um all there yes so and as she has included as well a um a link um, from csu uh you can search individual subject prices for commonwealth supported places oh and now we will end on somewhere between an essay and a question from Simon Saunders and thank you Simon, <laughs> which for your... yeah, is uh, a, a matter direct to Guy's heart because he oh. loves an essay or a question oh, please the answer is maybe um and thanks for everyone's involvement in the chat including Simon Simon says <laughs> I, I feel we are looking at a major overhaul of cybersecurity in the workforce yet I feel many workplaces still haven't got this implemented correctly I'm wondering at this point of time, it also seems that remuneration isn't valued for the skill set that is required. Do you see this as a growing industry that will start to really see those skills adequately compensated due to the value of protection and money value they protect? I want to know, do you see this pale scale increasing? Oh, oh, I'm so excited, Gentel. How can we go another hour? Um <laughs> so. I agree that there is a major overhaul of cybersecurity coming in the workforce. I do not think that it will be coming soon, Simon and others. I think that we will continue as it currently is. I hope for a future where cybersecurity is no longer 
a job designation because all IT should have as part of it a deep interest and a, and a primary focus on the security of those cyber activities. I disagree that the remuneration isn't valued for the skill set that is required. I think IT broadly, that may be the case, but cybersecurity has such a cachet at the moment that it is potentially even overvalued, uh, depending on the, the, role, uh, the, the role at which you enter, the, the point in the chain at which you enter. And this is what makes it such an interesting proposition as to when to study and when it's too much of a sacrifice to stop what you're doing in IT if you're already in the field and transition it across to a cyber role. If you can do it at, you know, at the point where, where you're sort of like getting into cybersecurity management, yeah, absolutely. If you're getting across into like a, a technical role, yeah, there's gonna be money there because people want those services. But it's at the IT service level or, or looking after a, a small to medium enterprise and being completely underappreciated because you know, people don't realize how hard it is just to just to watch all of us idiots do computer things poorly and, and make things work for others. Uh, that's that's the point at which the remuneration isn't there. Cyber, I don't think, is an issue. It's more like the networking and the cloud computing isn't paid well enough. Um, and and therefore I think we see the huge numbers in cybersecurity in our courses. I think that that will change, but I think it will take a long time because the government regulation, the maturity of institutions and organizations of their cybersecurity programs will take time as we migrate from, I suppose, uh, physical systems to more, I guess, ephemeral systems or cloud systems. Uh, and only when that changes will we see things change and that's going to take 5, 10, 15 years. Who knows? Um, sort of depends on a whole bunch of stuff. But I think cyber is a great bet for money. Cloud is a great bet for business people. And networking is a great bet for people that just want to know how things work and play with it. And then for those that are keen on exec roles do the MBA. And for project management and them digital marketing we probably don't focus on them enough but I think you'll find your own way that's the point I really don't have a lot to add to that one <laughs> that was a very uh thinking activity for Guy and he loves those but I think that's about it then um we have babbled at you for a while <laughs> um, more than I thought we would in the end. I, I'm just surprised that you're shocked. <laughs> it always happens. People want to know this stuff. People are grateful for IT masters and I am too. Thank goodness for you, Chantel. Um, so if you have further questions um, that weren't answered by my or guys rambling, uh, <laughs> And there's a chance they weren't. Um, admin good and chance. IT Masters is a really good place to go to. Sorry, admin at itmasters.edu.au or give us a call during 95, you know, Melbourne, Sydney hours, 1300 885 685. Um, send us some smoke signals, you know, contact us through eligibility, et cetera, et cetera, through our web form. I'm sure there's lots of other ways to contact us. And do but, short um, courses. They're free and easy. And apply. And Guy wants you to. And to apply. Take. If you're thinking about it, apply. And if, if you don't like the first couple of weeks, tell us to bugger off. I mean, right? that or just don't go. But that's fine. Um, but, yes, uh, the, the application date is fast approaching. Um, if you're interested in the Commonwealth Supported Places, I do think now's the time to apply because you never know what's going to happen with them. But um, please contact us if you have further questions and we will be happy to help. And now Guy can do the actual finish up spiel. Right, yeah, there's not much of a spiel. Just thank you everyone who's listening along live. Thank you to everyone who listens to the recording later. Thank you, Hannah and Kit for everything. 
Shane for being such an interesting uh, new marketing manager. And I hope that you'll all hear from Shane soon. Chantel for making it all possible. Um, yeah, just pleasure. Hope you got something out of it and, and have a great week and good luck with it. And if you need any help applying, we'll help with that too. Take care and thank you. Now, Shane, you have to win the meeting because you're host. I'm so bad at presenting.